Right, and I think we're live. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for joining in in this very impromptu stream, which I just decided to uh, throw together at the last minute. I needed a break from the work that I'm doing today. Um, and I've had this game for quite a while. Uh, it was quite a few months ago that Hidden Achievement um, gave me a Steam key for this game. So um, I've been wanting to play it for a while. So yeah, thank you very much to everybody for joining in. I just noticed our mini me is floating in the wrong position. I need to be just below. Bear with us a minute. I'm, I'm fussy about these things. I'm just going to move this down a little bit. That needs to be there. And then I need to be, you're not going to notice any difference, but, oh, I've gone. Where have I gone? Uh, I need to be there. That's it. Right. Okay. We're all sorted. Um, so yeah, thank you very much to everybody for joining in. Uh, Peter's here, Michael's here, Michael says, great game. Uh, click on Paul to quit. Yeah, this is funny because <laughs> it's pointing at me and saying quit. Um, so a little bit of an introduction about this. This is the Dresden Files cooperative card game. I'm going to be looking at the digital version of the game today. There is a physical version of the game uh, by Evil Hat Productions um, and it is Hidden Achievement that have done the digital version of the game. Now, I'm a massive Dresden Files fan. Uh, it's a series of novels, for those who don't know, written by Jim Butcher. Uh, about the wizard Harry Dresden set in modern day in Chicago. Brilliant series of books. I've read most of them. I'm not quite finished yet, um, but really love the setting, really love the IP. I have actually played the physical card game of this a couple of years ago, and I have to say that I was a little bit disappointed. And the reason for that is that I went into it expecting something, uh, something different. And I kind of went, oh, that was a bit disappointing and put it to one side. And then since getting the digital version, I've had to play around with it and I've actually come to start liking it a little bit. And the reason for that is I've now gone into it uh, with a different appreciation of what it is. It isn't a long, heavy, complex game at all. It's fairly quick. It is a bit of a puzzle game. Uh, anyway, I'm going to show you today, I'm going to show you the tutorial um, then. If people, are, if people like it and want me to do more videos, I might do some other videos later on. But for today, we are just going to go through the tutorial. So here we go. I've got the iPad there with the chat. Let's make that bigger. I don't need to make it. Where's the chat gone? The chat's disappeared. It was there. Live chat. There it is. It's there. Right. Okay. So we're going to go here and we're going to go into the tutorial. Now, let me know if the sound is too loud um, because I can turn it down. Um, I, I can't hear anything from coming from it. So yeah, let me know if the sound from the app is too loud uh, or not. I'll keep an eye on the chat, let me know. Right, welcome to the Dresden Files Cooperative Card Game Tutorial. It's a good tutorial by the way, I've already been through this. Just follow the instructions on these panels to learn how to play the game. If you feel at any time like you've got the hang of things and you want to skip ahead to the showdown, more on that later, or return to the main menu, just click the gear icon in the upper right hand panel. Okay, nobody's telling me the sound is too loud, so hopefully it's all okay. Let's take a quick tour around the table. So, fate points. So, fate points, or FP, or that icon there, which looks like the Captain America shield. Um, you spend fate when you play cards, and you can recover fate points by discarding cards. Now, we have 13 at the moment. Uh, the game does come with different difficulty settings, and on this difficulty setting, which I think is the easy one, you start with 13. So we're going to spend that one to play card. We're going to spend fate to play cards and we get fate back by discarding cards. Right. This is Harry ha Harry's hand down here. We have six cards in hand. Uh, each character has a different one. And we've actually played uh, three characters in this tutorial. So the other two characters you can see are up there. Uh, you can zoom your hand cards by either using your scroll wheel or by clicking and holding. Do this now. Okay, there you go. So we've zoomed in on Soul Gaze, um, and it's basically going to tell us the bits about this card. So this is the fate, right? This is how much fate it costs to play this card. Five is a lot. This is a powerful card. Uh, next up, oh, and if you discard this card, you'll get five fate. So the fate points on there are what you will uh, spend to play the card, or what you will get back if you discard the card. Right. Next up, uh, this bit. The number in the middle is the number of clues that this card will apply to a case. Hopefully it's going to explain what the two is. Right, on an attack card it will show the number of hits. So this is, a, this is an investigate card. Investigate cards are good against cases. Attack cards are good against enemies. And there's another type of card as well. Is it going to let me show that? Alright, no. 
The number in the box indicates the number of dice that will be added to this value. So this is five clues plus the result of two dice. Now, this uses the fate system of dice. These are not normal D6. They are fate dice. I think it's going to explain that. Yeah. So the fate dice have the sides two pluses, two blanks, and two minuses. So this will generate, you know, if I was to roll two minuses, this generates anywhere between three and seven clues. The fate dice, um, Michael's saying the background is a bit distracting. Right, okay. I'll turn it down. Uh, which means going to there and going to there. How's that? I've dropped it down a bit. Um, so yeah, the advantage of the fate dice is that they basically produce an average result. Okay, so that's that. The number here, this is the range of the card which shows how far you can attack from the left side of the board. You see the board in the background there, we'll get to that in a minute, but that's the range of the card. Uh, the first column is range 1, so this, this column here is range 1, this is range 2, etc, etc. Click anywhere. Okay, well I'll click here. There we go. Uh, so these cards here, these 12 cards, represent your challenges. There are cases, which are the green ones, there are foes, which are the red ones, obstacles, which are the yellow ones, and there are advantages that are, the, that are these purple ones. Um, this counter, this counter here, keeps track of how many foes are left on the board. So it says there four, nice and easy, so you don't have to count them. Uh, and this counter tells you how many cases have been solved, which is currently zero. To win the game, you have to solve more cases. <coughs> oh, excuse me a minute. It's got something in my throat. Where did that come from? <coughs> I would say, <coughs> I would say it's the peanut butter that I've just had, but. There wasn't any crunchy bits in it. Right, excuse me a minute. I'm just going to clear my throat. Let's mute my microphone. The disadvantages of live video. Still not quite right. Anyway. To win the game, you have to solve more cases than the number of remaining foes. So we have four foes remaining. No cases solved, so we can't win the game at the moment. Uh, these are Harry's allies up here. So the number in the right hand corner of each is the number of cards remaining in that ally's hand. So you can see straight away. And in a multiplayer game, these characters are played by other players. So this is a multiplayer game, but you can play it solo. And you can play, I think it's one to four characters. <clears throat> uh, Von Kira says, keep looking outside for the thunderstorm. Yes. Um, yeah, the first scenario in this game is actually based on Stormfront, which is the first book in the series. If you haven't read the Dresden Files, go and get book one. Either the audio book or the physical book. Fantastic. So in a solitaire game, I'm going to be controlling all of the characters. So this is Karen Murphy. Karen Murphy is um, she, she's a, a policewoman. Um, I think she's a sergeant at this stage in the story. I can't quite remember. But we're going to have a look at her now. There we go. So this is Karen Murphy. Uh, these are the character's special cards, which is a stunt and a talent. The stunt is a special card that is only played once per game, uh, whereas the talent uh, is, is a permanent ability. So with this character's stunt, you can return... Oh, when it's this character's turn, you can return to this panel to play the stunt, yeah. The talent a special card that activates every time you discard a card. So when you discard a card for fate points, add one clue to the case at the longest range. Okay. Table talk tab. Let's press this. So with this in a multiplayer game, uh, you can find hints about the other player's hands here. However, since there is a solitaire game, since this is a solitaire game, you are allowed to see every character's hand. So yeah, in a multiplayer game, the other characters would have cards in their hand. Right. Close this panel. Okay. So when everyone is done planning, Harry's player decides who goes first. Since you are Harry's player, that's you. So this is interesting because in a lot of cooperative card games, um, it's, it's either random who goes for us or it doesn't really matter. In this game, it can actually matter. So we're going to make a start. Right, select a character. Who should go first? Now, it is suggesting that we select Michael Carpenter to go first. What you will do when you play this game properly, you will look at the all of the things that you're going to be facing. Go get outside. Um, every time I open the window for a bit of fresh air, something happens outside. Um, anyway, right. Once you've looked at the initial 12 cards, that you, the things that you're going to be facing, and looked at each character's initial starting hand of cards, that's when you will decide which character should go first. So there's a few things that you need to take into account. So we're playing Michael Carpenter. 
Uh, I won't go into details about who this character is because I don't want to give any spoilers away. Um, but he has a sword. Zoom in on the obstacle, three-eyed drug war to get a closer look. Here we go. Right, so this obstacle is going to make it harder for us to roll well. We should make an effort to overcome it soon. So it says here, until this obstacle is overcome, a blank, when you roll a blank, it actually becomes a negative. So as long as this card is in play, the three-eyed drug war, uh, that's going to basically be a problem for us. Select the blessing overcome card in Michael's hand. So these are blessings. These are uh, yellow cards, and blessings are what overcome... Sorry. Overcome cards are what you use to overcome obstacles. And this particular one is Blessing. Um, it's hard not to give any spoilers away, but um, you can see from the icon uh, on there. Uh, yeah, he's basically, he's a Knight of the Cross. Uh, he's a holy man. So, in future, to deselect a card, click it again. Okay. Note that Blessing has a range of two, measured from the left side of the board. Yeah, it says range two, so that's from the left side of the board, so one, two. It can reach three-eyed drug war, but it cannot reach Morgan is watching. Where's Morgan is watching? Range five. We can't actually see that, but I assume it's there. Yeah, Morgan is watching. It's here. Blessing costs a variable amount of fate. Ah, so this costs two plus the roll of a die. Okay. Uh, it sounds horrible outside. Well, the dog's gone now, so <laughs> so we're going to roll the die to see how much fate it costs. Um, we have rolled a plus. Now that's not good for us because it actually means it's going to cost us three fate. Once you've rolled the dice, you can no longer deselect it. Yeah, so no undoes. So now select three eyed drug water, use blessing to overcome it. So Michael Carpenter uses blessing to overcome three eyed drug war. And is it just as simple as that? I think it is. It says overcome one obstacle. So there you go. Three fate has been spent. That obstacle has gone. That is Michael's turn done. Next, we have Karen's turn. So, all, as cards are removed from the board, the remaining cards will move left to fill the empty space. Uh, this will help you reach cards that were out of range at the start of the game. So you can see here, these 12 cards, that is it. That is the scenario. It isn't like a big deck of cards or anything else. It's just 12 cards. And at the start of the game, those 12 cards are shuffled, and they're placed there into two rows of six. There are certain rules about what can't be where, but we won't cover that today. Right, we're going to look at this card now. This is an advantage card, and it says zoom in to see what it does. There we go. So, beer at Max. Max is like a, um, a pub that Harry goes to quite often. Card draws are very rare in this game. Yes, they are. Any opportunity you get to... Uh, one is a great boon. Uh, we should see if we have a way to take this card. So, in the actual physical game, and in this game, your deck of cards is like nine or ten cards. It isn't like many games where you have a big deck of cards and you're drawing lots of them. You have very few cards in this game in your deck. So as it says, card draws are very rare. And if we take beer at max, the active player draws one card and distributes two cards between other players. Now, how do we take it? It must be dangerous on the streets of Chicago today. We can use Karen's Kevlar vest to take beer at max as long as we don't roll a minus. Um, Okay, so it's highlighting this. I don't know why it's highlighting that. Since it only costs one to play that card, it's probably worth the risk. Yeah, so Kevlar Vest is here. It seems to be highlighting this card, and I'm not sure why. Um, so, select Kevlar Vest. Yeah, look, it's got things on it. There's a reason for that. I've forgotten what it is, but there's a reason for that. So, Kevlar Vest. We have a look at it. Uh, roll for range, because if you look at this, the range is 2 plus the roll of a die. So if we roll a negative, this isn't actually going to work. Okay, we rolled a blank, so it is range 2, that's good. So we can go after the beer after all. Select beer at max, we use the Kevlar vest to take beer at max. I don't know how you use Kevlar vest to take a beer, but it, it, it's one of those games that um, I personally don't think there's that that much of a thematic connection with what you're doing it's more of a puzzle game it's more i've got this card that's going to allow me to overcome that one try not to read too much theme into what's actually going on so we get we so karen's drawn a card and we get to distribute two cards amongst allies selecting one ally will distribute both cards to that one we're going to distribute one to each so one to harry one to michael okay those characters have now drawn a card so it's now harry's turn Harry feels a bit nervous about that Morgan is watching card. Let's zoom in and have a look. So Morgan is a character who has definitely got it in for Harry. 
and it says, until this obstacle is overcome, all attacks cost plus one fate. Now, we haven't done any attacks yet, but it's, this card is basically going to make all attacks harder. Uh, Daryl's just joined in in the chat. Hi, Daryl, and successful geek is here. Didn't know this was coming out. Um, the game has actually been out for quite a while. Um, yeah, the, digi the digital version of this game has been out for a long time. Um, I can't remember how long, maybe a year, year and a half, maybe more. Um, I'm just getting around to covering it now. Um, so, yeah, anyway, Morgan is watching. So it's at range five. We're not going to have anything that's going to reach that, have we? Oh, well, maybe we do. So luckily, Harry's talent, Wizard PI, allows us to move an obstacle or an advantage one range in either direction. All he has to do is discard one card to activate it, but that's that card gone. Since there is only one advantage card left on the board, let's discard Ventas Servitas, which is one of his spells. Um, so this is a spell that allows him to take an advantage, and it's saying we should discard that because there's only one advantage left on the board, which is this speed potion here. And now there's a plane going overhead. It's all happening this afternoon. So we're going to discard this. We're going to discard it for fate. Now, it's only one fate. Okay, but it's telling us to discard it. So that's what we've done. I assume you can hear that plane going overhead. Select, select an obstacle or advantage to move. Let's just have a look at Harry's talent. Can we? No, we'll have a look at that in a minute. So we're going to select Morgan is watching. And we're going to move it one space closer. There you go. Right, so that was Harry's turn done. Uh, let's see, is the tutorial going to allow us to have a look at Harry's talent? No. So Harry's got a talent which basically says whenever he discards cards for fate, he can move either an obstacle or an advantage one space forward, which is what he did. Right, Michael Carpenter's talent, Holy Knight of the Cross, is very special. It allows him to prepare a range bonus for a future action. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to discard prayer for fate, which is one fate, but... What happens now is Michael gets to activate his talent, which it says here. Um, now, my, Michael's talent, oh, it's, it's, it's flipped through it quickly. I'll try and show you. I don't know if I can. No, I'll explain it. Michael's talent is actually a two-sided card. So what happens, whenever he discards a card for fate, that card flips over, and the ability on the other side is now active, um, which means he can flip it down at some future point to get a bonus range. We'll see that when it gets back to him. So, it's time for Murphy to do some investigation. So we're going to select Street Sense, which is going to cost three fate to play. Is it going to let us zoom in? No. Uh, we're going to select Victory is Missing, because it is a range one investigation. Victory is Missing is at range one. So we're going to see how investigation works. The fate cost is three. We have 11. So here we go. So we've spent three fate, and all it did was added three clues to the card. There was no dice rolling or anything else. It was just three fate for three clues. So you can see that there are now three clues on this investigation. And once it's got nine, that particular case is solved. Harry is going to do some investigating too, but he's going to use a special card. Right, what's he going to use? He's going to use Consult with Bob. Uh, and again, not giving too many spoilers away, but Bob is uh, one of Harry's allies, should we say, sort of. Um, right, cards with a star on them have special rules, which is here. In this case, Bob is giving Harry clues about a whole load of cases, a whole lot of cases. Add two clues to all cases in one row. Now, it does cost four fate, but we are going to play it. So we're going to select Victory is Missing just to select the row. So it's actually going to add two clues to all of these cases here. One, two, three, there. Two on each. There you go. Right, Michael's turn. Uh, this icon down in the corner is to remind us that Michael has his two range bonus from the Knight of the Holy Cross talent, sorry, Holy Knight of the Cross talent that he got earlier on, which you can see here. Holy Knight of the Cross down in the bottom left, that is now ready. So we're going to use that range boost to use Fist of God to overcome Morgan is Watching. So Morgan is Watching is at range four. This card has a range of two, but it has a star on it. This card adds bonus clues and damage to neighbouring cards. It's a bad day for foes who get in Michael's way. Okay, so we are going to play this card. We are going to do it on this one. We're going to flip over the, the talent in order to get the two extra range. And it's got rid of the obstacle and it's dealt two damage, uh, two damage to the foe and added two clues to the, to the case. Right, now we have no fate left. 
this is the thing. So on Murphy's turn, she's going to have to discard a card for fate. No other choice. You either play a card or discard a card. Or use one of your special abilities. So there are no more obstacles to overcome. So this badge card here, uh, this can now just be discarded. We don't need that at all. So that can be discarded. And whenever Karen discards a card for fate, she can add one clue to the case at the longest range, which is either of these. Um, and what is it it's going to say? Who is the Shadow Man? There you go. So we're going to get rid of that one. Well, we're not going to get rid of it. We're going to add a clue to it. Right, Harry's turn. We still only have one fate. Harry still has an Overcome card that he doesn't need. The Blue Beetle must have broken down again. Yeah, so these Overcome cards now are now... Uh, we're not going to play them for their actual ability because they are used to overcome obstacles and there are no more obstacles. So we can use this, discard it, we get three fate, and Harry, if he wants to, can now move an obstacle or an advantage one space forward. So let's move the speed potion one space forward. Okay, it's about timing your actions together because it said there, move that one space forward so that Michael can take it and that's where you've got to work together as a group with this you've got to coordinate your card plays so that one character can feed off another one right so we're going to have a look at the speed potion which is um, uh, Kal Shazak is already at the end of his row Kal, Jada, Kal Shazak is a nasty foe but drawing another card would always be great because it says the active player draws a card and then immediately takes another turn you may move Kal Shazak to the furthest range so you can basically move it back. Now, Kal Shazak is here. This is the foe. It's a toad demon. Um, so, yeah, what are we doing? We're using this card here to take the advantage. You've got two range, so we can do this. So we can use that to take the speed potion. Okay, when taken, active player draws a card, and then it's Michael's turn again. So Michael is going to discard Family Man because he no longer needs it. His wife is not going to be amused. <laughs> yeah, poor Michael's wife. Um, so we're discarding that for four fate. Right, we've got six fate. And his talent is readied again. Okay, Karen's going. Let's discard in the no so that we've got plenty of fate to play with. So in the no is this one. And uh, if you were playing this game properly, you would really need to think about this. Because if you discard a card, it's gone. You're not going to get your discards back. Discard in this game pretty much means it's gone. And remember, you, you, only, you don't draw automatically. You only get card draw when there is an ability telling you that you draw cards, and it's very rare. So basically, you've got your cards in your hand, that's all you've got to basically complete the game. So we're discarding this for fate. So Karen rolls, two dice gets a negative result, so unfortunately only got two fate for that. Okay. Um, but we're going to add a clue to there. Nice. Right, Harry's turn. So there's a C symbol. You may have noticed these. There is a C symbol on Victor is missing and the other C is on the Shadow Man. So here, Victor is missing. It's got a C on it. This means something special. An A symbol means that the card has some kind of effect on another card. Uh, uh, an A, or one of those, one of those symbols, one of those symbols containing the same letter appears on cards that are affected. So what it means is this card here is going to have an effect <coughs> on another card that also has a C. And you can see that down at the bottom. It actually says, when solved, add three clues to who is the Shadow Man. So let's play Soul Gaze to solve the Victor is Missing case, because we've got five clues on it. We only need nine, and Soul Gaze is going to add five, plus or minus two. So hopefully, it will work. Um, there's a dice roll on the number of clues that this investigate card does, so let's roll them bones. <coughs> Definitely got something in my throat. Okay, that's not too bad. We rolled a negative, but actually that was enough. That was four. Four clues. Case is solved. So that moves up here to where it says case solved. Remember, we've got to solve more cases than the number of foes. This game doesn't go on forever. It goes on until you get to a certain point called the showdown. Um, and obviously when we did that, we added three clues to who is the Shadow Man. So that's now on six out of ten. Right. It's time to try out one of those special stunt cards. Oh yes, the special stunt cards. So click on Michael, Michael's portrait. Remember, the once per game ability. So Michael's once per game ability is Amarachius, which is the name of his sword. Uh, as your turn, flip this card over to add three hits to any one legal foe that has no hit on it. 
and then move that card to the farthest range in its row. Yeah, so he hits it so hard, it gets knocked back. So we're going to use the stunt. We're going to hit the giant scorpion. Okay, so that's been used. That gets three hits and gets knocked to the end of the round. Right, Karen's turn. So we're going to now use Murphy's stunt, which is uh, flip this card over to collect one fate point for each foe with hits and each case with clues. Wow, this is going to be a lot. Yeah, so this is going to get us how many back? Nice. We got five fate for that. But remember, that's a once per game ability. Uh, Merchant Prince Digital, <coughs> if I can pronounce it. Merchant Prince Digital. Hi, Dan. Thank you for joining in. Uh, there are a whole lot of foes on that bottom row, so let's use Pyro Fuego. Pyro Fuego, which is one of Harry's spells. Gets his staff out and blast everything with like fireball. It won't affect Kal Shazak because he's immune to damage until who, who is the Shadow Man is solved. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that, but it said uh, the who is the Shadow Man case until you solve it, uh, Kal Shazak can't be here, basically. So Pyro Fuego, very powerful card, costs four. Um, and basically does two hits to everything in one row. Uh, so we've got infinite range. So we're going to select this row at the bottom. And there we go. It's going to do two damage to everything. Blast, blast, blast. There you go. Michael's turn. So we're now going to banish the darkness to investigate the is Marcone involved. So where's Marcone involved? Is Marcone involved? Two clues on it. Need seven. And this is going to add three. Okay. So it's going to cost three fate to play, and it's going to add three clues. One, two, three. Okay, we are done. Karen's turn. So we're getting low on fate again. So it's suggesting we discard Surprise Aikido Move, which is this one. Now this is a very, very powerful card, but yeah, we're probably not going to play it. So we're going to discard this card for fate. We've rolled a plus, that's nice. So we get five fate back. Um, we're going to add a clue to this one. Right, Harry's turn. Harry's now using his Blasting Rod, which is which is his stunt. Um, as your turn, flip this card over to add four hits to any one foe that will be defeated by one to four hits. So we're going to use it, and we're going to select the Giant Scorpion. So there you go, that's the Blasting Rod used. Again, that's a once per game ability. That's the Scorpion gone. Michael's turn. Only two cards left. We're going to put Kevlar Helps. We're going to discard it for Fate. Which means he... No, his special ability doesn't apply because it's already, it's already active. Karen's turn. Again, two cards left. We're going to look at Detective Work now, which is a card that costs five Fate to play. Um, it's going to give us three plus or minus one clues, or three, well, between two and four clues. And if the investigation... If investigation solves target case, add three clues to any case. So if we do this and we succeed and we solve a case with this card, we're going to add another three clues to another case. Okay, so we're going to do it. We roll to see how much it's going to cost us. Oh, we rolled the plus, so it's going to cost us four fate. Um, but now we can solve two cases at once. Yes. So we're going to solve who is the shadow man. Put four on that. And then because that solves it, we then put three on this, which solves that. Nice. So three cases are solved, three foes remaining. Okay, so we're getting close. Uh, Harry's turn is going to do this, which is take one advantage, so we're going to discard it for fate. Ugh, we only got one. Okay. And yeah, Harry's talent doesn't work because there was no target. Right, Michael's turn. Michael has one card left in hand. It is an attack card. Um, it's dangerous. We could end up accidentally going to the showdown if we roll a plus for the fate cost. So it hasn't actually mentioned the showdown yet, really. But basically, if you ever if you ever try to spend more fate than you have, then the showdown happens and we go to basically the final battle. Um, and it's saying that it, it could be dangerous. So we're going to roll anyway and see what happens. We've rolled a blank, so that's fine. Cost us three fate. We have no fate left. We're going to attack one of Marcone's goons. There we go. And he's going to put three hits on it. One, two, three. Done. Karen's turn. Karen is going to investigate. Uh, no, she's not. She's going to discard it for fate because we have no fate. 
So that's Karen. Karen is completely out of cards now. Harry's turn. Harry has one card left. It's an overcome card and we have no, no obstacles left. So we're going to be discarding that for fate as well. Uh, okay, so we've still got three foes left. This is not ideal, but we're about to go into the showdown. So we're out of cards. If other characters still had cards you wanted to play, you could use the pass button. Passing costs one fate. Sometimes it's the right choice. In this case, it looked like we're done with our hands, so it's time to go to the showdown. You can actually click the showdown button at any time during the game to view the showdown card. So this is the showdown card. It basically shows you the various rolling options that will be available during the showdown and their respective costs. So, um, is it going to explain it? Yeah, you begin the game, uh, you can begin the showdown by clicking the button at the bottom of the card. So you can actually go into the showdown whenever you want to, but you don't want to do it too early. Uh, but we're going to do it now. You will not be able to return to the game once the showdown has started. Yes. Okay, so showdown time. Here we go. This is how the showdown works. Each card that is eligible for a showdown roll will have buttons above it showing the rolling options for the showdown card. Here. Uh, you only roll one of these options for a given card. It's basically it's a last-ditch effort to try and get rid of the foes or to try and solve the cases. Um... Yeah, so of all the remaining targets, Marcone's goons are going to be the easiest to defeat. We only need to land two hits, and you'll see that if we spend no fate, we basically we're going to roll six dice. Who knows what we're going to get there? If we spend one fate, we get one hit and five dice. And if we spend three fate, we get two dice and five. Sorry, two hits and five dice. So we have five fate left. So we're going to spend it all. We're not going to go on any of the other cards. We're just going to get rid of this one because if we get rid of this one, that's one foe gone. Case is solved three, foes remain two, we win. Basically, it's got a 50-50 chance of victory, jury. So we're going to roll the dice and see what happens. We got two pluses and a minus, so we did three damage. That is done. Oh no, we still have two fate left. So we could actually spend two fate on this. It's not going to help us. No. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Uh, that is it. Yeah, I don't know what these yellow arrows are. But anyway, we did it. Now that was the tutorial, okay? Um, and it was literally, I didn't make any choices in that. It was telling us exactly what to do. But when you play the game properly, and I do, I, I will probably do another video of this at least, you will see some of the decisions you have to make in the game. You will have to decide whether you are playing a card or discarding it. Uh, what does this do? I'm clicking on the button. It's not doing anything. Oh, well. And this was Stormfront. So let's just go back to the menu and show you what's included in the game. Because... There are a few different scenarios included in the game, and there's lots and lots of little mini expansions that you can buy. Loads of extra characters, um, and loads of other ex expansions as well. I only have, for now, uh, so yeah, so here is expansion number one, which you can, you can buy. Um, yeah, expansion three, uh, Faithful Companion. Yeah, lots of little mini expansions, lots and lots of them. I'm gonna play the game a few more times, and then I'll contact them to see if they want me to give it any, any more coverage. Um, but yeah, let's just, I'm, I'm gonna start again now just so you see this bit of it. Um, but I'm not gonna play through another game today. So here we go, this is where you've got your options. You can either play hot seat, so multiple people on one computer. Um, you can play online multiplayer. So if anybody has a copy of this game and wanted a game with me, let me know, it's on Steam. You can do direct connection to uh, another computer in the same house over an IP address probably even remotely. Um, we're going to play Solitaire, okay, we're going to set it up for Solitaire, um, where we control Harry and two companions, was that right? No, oh, no, I did that wrong, didn't want to do that. <laughs> Let's go back. I wanted to select how many players you can play with, and I thought you could. So I'm playing Solitaire, oh maybe you can't, maybe Solitaire, you play three characters. Yeah, I think that's it. I think if you play multiplayer, uh, I think you can play two to four characters, but I think Solitaire is three characters. Remember, you could actually play um, Hot Seat. So it's kind of representing multiplayer, but you're actually playing Hot Seat at the same computer. It's like you. Anyway, these are the first five books in the Dresden Files, and these are all of the other ones which um, are currently... That, this is the book that I'm reading at the moment, Ghost Story. Um, so the, only, the padlock is all of the extra content that you can 
you can make. Uh, so let's let's say let's say we decide to play Summer Night. Okay, now you probably should play them in order, but just for now I'm going to play Summer Night. And you can see in the top right it tells you how many cases, how many obstacles, how many foes, how many advantages. It's different for each one. So you may want to choose which characters you want to bring with you um, based on the case. So I'm just going to show you Summer Night now. Difficulty. So this was, as I mentioned, this is the starting fate. I believe with Apprentice you start with 13 fate. Wizard, I think it's 10. Merlin, I think it's 7. Uh, and if you want to, you can even set it even easier by starting with an extra card. We're going to just play on Apprentice. And... Right, so control Harry and two companions. So it's definitely, definitely Harry. Um, okay, there's some variants here. Okay. Um, do we choose the other ones? Oh, okay. Ah, here we go. Right, so joining Harry, um, I can I can choose Michael. I can choose Susan Rodriguez. Um, oh, so I've got Karen Murphy, Michael Carpenter, Susan Rodriguez, and Billy and Georgia, which are wolves. Um, these other characters, again, are ones that you can add in if you buy the extra little expansion packs. So let's say we're going to play with... Let's just play with Karen and, and Michael again. And there you go. So it's shuffled the cards, it's put them out, and this is the setup rules. You can't have an advantage at range 6. So it shuffled them around, and as mentioned at the start, this is where you need to be looking at this, you need to be looking at these cards, seeing what they do, working out the order in which you want to do things. Look at the obstacles, find out what the obstacles are going to do for you, because in the last game we actually got rid of all the obstacles before we did anything. You don't have to do that. You could just live with the obstacle. But remember, you have certain cards, and the only point of this card is to overcome an obstacle, but it costs three fate. Lots of decisions that... I, I mean, I've played this game a bunch now, and it, whilst on the surface it looks like a relatively simple puzzle game, play cards, discard cards, whatever, and there's a little bit of randomness with the dice rolling, it's, it is like solving a puzzle. You've got to go through a thought process where you've got to try and work out, oh, okay, so these are my cards, um, let's just switch to Karen's cards. Can we switch to Karen's cards? Is it going to let us switch to Karen's cards? How do we look at Karen's cards? Is it that? Yes. Oh no, this is asking us which characters go first. Is it that? Don't know how you switch. Okay, so that's Harry's. Yeah, I should have looked at this more. Is it this one? Yeah, here's Karen's card. So the, these are the cards Karen has in hand. And then you would look at which card Michael has in hand. And then you would decide which character is going to go first. And then, yeah, you've got to try and solve it. So in this one, there are only three foes. And this is the showdown card. So the showdown card is slightly different for each, uh, each scenario. But that's it. That's, that's a first look at the game. It is one where I, sa I said it was a first look. It's, a, it's not my first look. I have played a bunch of games on this. Um, but yeah, I quite fancy giving some uh, coverage. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want me to do any more of these and put a comment in the YouTube video. Uh, which case do you want me to do? Do you want me to play Stormfront, which was the first book? Um, or do you want me to do another one? As I say, we do have, uh, what, four or five? Five different cases or five different scenarios available to us. Uh, we have four or five characters to choose from. But yeah, that's everything. Um, so yeah. Make sure you like this video. If you're not subscribed to me, make sure you subscribe, subscribe to me. Um, if you like the content that I make, please consider supporting me over at Patreon. Thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters uh, for making a lot of the content that I make possible. Um, that's it for now. Yeah, I'm going to disappear and get some dinner. Um, I will speak to you later on. Thanks very much for everybody for watching and I will see you all soon. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.